welcome from all around the world. We are very honoured that Maria Hopwood's given us the opportunity today to interview Dr. Gary Samuelson. Also want to say thank you to Stevie Aquilina who's handling the Facebook Live. So that's on Gary Samuelson Facebook page. Um, feel free to put your supportive comments on the page, but refrain from asking any questions out of respect for Dr. Samuelson on his Facebook page. We are Bart and Melissa Cotter. We're from the Sunshine Coast in beautiful Australia. And we, hi, Dr. Samuelson. <laughs> it's great to see you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Stevie refers to you actually as his hero. And I want to say that you are all of our heroes. And for those of you new on the webinar today, you'll understand more about that statement as you watch the webinar that we're gonna go through today. So we may have time for Q&A at the end. Um, we may not, we'll just see how we go with timing. Um, so feel free to add your questions in the chat box and get back to the person who's invited you for any specific questions that you may have. So we want to make sure that your questions in the chat box are RSC compliant because only those ones will be read out. Mm -hmm. And as a disclaimer, we just need to say that the SEAS products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease or medical condition. So I wanted to tell you just a little bit about Dr. Samuelson before I hand it over to Bart. Um, as many of you may know, Dr. Samuelson is an atomic medical physicist. He received his doctorate degree from the University of Utah, and he actually cross-specialised with the medical department and the physics department. So basically, he's really, really intelligent, and he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> so that's a good cue to say, make sure you pay attention and listen, because um, this gentleman was able to create the impossible with his team of scientists and he stabilised redox signalling molecules in a perfectly balanced set outside the body. And as many of you know, they're stabilised in some of the SEERS products. And Dr Samuelson's going to talk a little bit about that today in terms of redox technology. But uh, we wanted to also let you know that Dr Samuelson is really driven by the dream that he really wants to see the day when the greatest scientific achievements are manifested and come to life for our benefit in this century. So we're totally excited for that too. And today our topic is redox biotechnology and micronutrition at the cellular level. So we're going to learn a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm going to hand the time over to Bart. Yeah. Like in terms of, uh, of, of a hero, he's certainly one of my heroes, Dr. Samuelson. It was a pivot point in my life when, when I met, uh, met you when I came to Salt Lake City um, four years ago. So it was a, definitely a, a defining moment. Um, you know, I know that there's a lot, of, a lot of people on the call today that are new. We've got health professionals, uh, people that really may not know your background. And I guess uh, in your experience, I guess, first of all, um, you know, some people have asked, what, what exactly is an atomic medical physicist? Maybe you can share that with us and just kind of what led you to this field of study. I've always been interested in science. Uh, that's about all my um, motivation is all about, besides the idea that we can apply knowledge for the good of people, and that, that's also very important. Um, but I've always been interested in, in life. So, um, you know, what makes life tick? So when I was... Uh, um, be, even before I was going through school and I was small, I wondered, uh, you know, how we could figure out how life goes. If you understand what happens inside a cell, I thought oh, it would be great. Well, there's a lot of molecules in there and you figure out what's happening inside the molecule. What's happening inside the molecules depends on how the atoms fit together. And I said, well, if I figure out how the atoms fit together, I can understand everything. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you'd be surprised how you have the you know, six types of uh, major uh, components that we have in our body as far as atomic spectra uh, components are concerned, how many you can make. So we, we, uh, I learned um, <laughs> how the atom worked. And uh, that's what atomic physicists do, basically. We, we uh, study how atoms work, how they go together, how they form molecules, and how those molecules interact inside living organisms. Um, it's pretty fascinating. Um Read, read, I've read your book, the, the Science of Healing Revealed, which really gets right into the basics of what that have, you know, how that works, how the healing works, and exactly how the cell. That's pretty interesting when you understand that these little molecules in our 
in every cell of our body, basically um, they they create these molecules within a millisecond. The body has to use them in that time. And it's pretty amazing that you were even, even able to, to dis that they could even discover these molecules in the first place, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, we talked yesterday, I'd really like you to do just a little bit of an overview so that we have an understanding of the redox technology and how that works. And then we'll kind of move into the nutrition side of it. But uh, um, do, you have, do you have some, could you share that with us? Yeah, I think you may have some slides to kind of just talk with us a little bit about what the redox molecules are and how they affect our health and our body. I certainly do. I think that uh, the slides would help uh, present it a little bit better than, uh, than I could just verbally. Uh, hold on a minute. I'll share my screen. I hope everyone can see that. We can. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Um, the first point, you know, getting right off the uh, with the uh, presentation, um, our cells are machines. And that's one of the things that you start to recognize that our cells are machines that have to operate according to the laws of physics, the laws of chemistry all of these uh, different types of um, organisms have been made out of cells and each cell then has a bunch of components in it that have to function according to such laws, right? Um, well, uh, we also have idea of what a machine is. You know, here's a car engine. And every day we need to go into, uh, you know, the store, we need to do some traveling, we use this machine to, to help us get around. Uh, well, what does this machine need in order to be able to function? Uh, what does a car need? How about uh, that one? Gas. Yeah. Yeah. That kind, kind of a little bit important. The gas is the fuel that provides the energy uh, that turns the engine. How about this? Oil. Oil helps lubricate everything so that it functions efficiently, doesn't rub together. Transmission fluid, I bet a lot of you have heard of some of these things, even though you might not know exactly how an engine works. Uh, some of you, of you might actually know how a, an engine works. Uh, how about antifreeze? Uh, very important in the winter and in the summer too for cooling. How about power steering fluid? Uh, it's kind of important if you have power steering in your car. Grease also uh, helps things move around. And brake fluid. Um, just like our engines in our car, our cells also need uh, a very essential materials in order to be able to function. Uh, what do you think that some of those are? How about that one? Oxygen. <laughs> Sugars and polysaccharides, they produce the energy, they help produce the energy inside, just like the fuels inside the car. Fats also make up the little uh, structures in our, um, in the membranes of our cells. Proteins and amino acids make up these little micro machines uh, that uh, run around inside of our cells. I'm gonna show you a little bit about these in a minute. Micronutrients also uh, actually are the materials uh, that build most of the uh, structures and machines in our cell. Carotenoids and flavonoids are uh, cofactors or important parts also of these nutrients that, that build the cell. Uh, now I have a question for you. Suppose I were to take um, uh, an engine and remove the gas. Would it, would it function? Probably not. How about if I remove the oil? How about the oil? How about any of these, uh, of these components? So we might not know how an engine works, but we do know that in order to maintain our engine optimally, so it's functioning as it should, we need to provide it with certain materials and supplies. Just obvious. Uh, absolutely the same for the cells. If we were to move the oxygen, that, that would be fairly, um, fairly bad. If we were to move, in fact, any of these elements uh, by, by itself, it, that would be bad. Uh, now today in our uh, modern 
agriculture. We depend upon the plants that grow out of the ground in order to provide us with these micronutrients. Um, I forgot to put also uh, minerals in here. Minerals are very important. Micronutrients that are, are needed for the cell to survive. Unfortunately, uh, some of those micronutrients have been processed out of our foods um, as part of these processed foods. Also, those uh, nutrients that used to be in foods that came from bacteria in the roots also uh, now are deficient because uh, insecticides and mo modern agricultural methods have killed the bacteria that produce uh, these nutrients. And so uh, our modern foods actually are uh, deficient in many of these areas. Can we expect our cells then to be absolutely 100% efficient if they are missing some of these uh, critical materials and supplies? And that's, uh, that's what uh, I wanted to say uh, a little bit about that. That's, a, I hope, very uh, clear picture. I'm going to show you a little bit now about um, what these little micro machines look like inside the cells. This comes from a Harvard Medical School. I'll um, go through this uh, video for, for you. But these machines that power the inside of the cells are really quite amazing, and they really are the basis of all life, but because all of these machines uh, interact with each other, they pass information to each other, they cause different things to happen inside the cell, and the cell will actually manufacture the parts that it needs on the fly from information that's brought from the nucleus by uh, molecules that read the genes. And no life, from the smallest life to everybody here, would be possible without these little micro-machines. In fact, it would, it would really, in the absence of these machines, uh, have made the attendance here, Chris, really quite sparse. By the way, that is a reduction when these things come together. Stick, that's oxidation when they come apart. That's a reduction and, and oxidation. The cell. This little guy is called a kinesin and he pulls a sac that's full of brand new manufactured proteins to wherever it's needed in the cell, whether it's to a membrane, whether it's to an organelle, whether it's to build something or repair something. And each of us has about 100,000 of these things running around right now inside each one of your 100 trillion cells. So no matter how lazy you feel, you're not really intrinsically doing nothing. <laughs> So what I want you to do when you go home is think about this and think about how powerful our cells are and think about some of the things that, that we're learning about cellular uh, mechanics. And once we figure out all that's going on, and, and believe me, we know almost a percent of what's going on. Once we figure out what's going on, we're really going to be able to have a lot of control over what we do with our health, with what we do with future generations, how long we're going to live and hopefully we'll be able to use this to discover more truth and more beauty. Now I want you to look at this a little bit. These little guys are just about to be oxidized. Um, this is important to understand what redox is all about, by the way. There goes the, uh, there goes the signaling molecules. These micro-machines are aware enough of what the cell needs, that they do their bidding, they work together, they make the cell do what it needs to do, and their working together helps our bodies, huge entities that they will never see, function properly. I hope that you enjoyed that, and you, I hope that you were able to see it and, and appreciate some of that, the things that take place in our cell. That, that was a great video for us to really, truly appreciate what goes on without our knowledge because we put a lot of things in our body that we don't realize our machines have to deal with. So that was a phenomenal analogy. Thanks so much for sharing that, Dr. Samerson. I, I love how you've got uh, the ability to, to make the complex very understandable. <laughs> the, the, the perfect example, too. It's amazing what, what happens in every one of those 75 trillion cells in our body. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Well, did you see some of those proteins moving around yes. and doing, doing their functions and, and such? We saw some of the DNA or RNA creating proteins in the cell. Um, all of those molecules that we saw that are proteins made out of amino acids, which are essential nutrients that come from, from proteins, right? And then there are many of the others are made out of the different essential nutrients that we were talking about before. Um, so in order to build a cell, if we were going to build one, we need the uh, DNA, we would need the micronutrient supplies, and we would need energy to make everything work. And then we'd also need uh, something else that are, is very important, and these are the messengers. They're the ones that read the DNA, that know what's happening inside the cell, and pass that information to the workers, and the workers then coordinate all the information and activity that's happening inside the cell to make it uh, possible to build and maintain all, all of the structures that are inside the cell. Uh, how, how fascinating is that? Now, we need to have a perfect balance or a balance of everything inside our working cells in order to be able to have health. And um, I wanted to go through uh, one of the molecules that's needed. It's called oxygen. Oxygen is also the father of the redox signaling molecules that I'm going to be talking about. Reduction and oxidation basically means that, uh, that uh, these atoms get or receive or give uh, electrons. Oxygen is really great at grabbing and stealing electrons. It will oxidize uh, molecules in its neighborhood. When it oxidizes, it, it also becomes reduced. That's the language. Reduced means that it obtains an electron. So this happens at the same time the oxygen obtains an electron, the same time that it steals an electron from another molecule. So it's called redox or reduction oxidation. And these are the, um, these are the things that take place inside of our body. When oxygen is reduced, when it gains more electrons, it changes, it transforms, transforms into a superoxide anion. These are one of the redox signaling molecules. Transforms into peroxide, which is like hydrogen peroxide. This is another one of the redox signaling molecules. If it gains another electron, it transforms into hydroxyls and very, uh, very reactive um, species. And at the very end, it transforms into Water. <laughs> Water is the most reduced form of, uh, of the oxygen molecule. So we take, when we breathe in a uh, deep breath of uh, air, we take in a lot of oxygen. And inside our metabolism, that oxygen is transformed through all of these redox signaling molecules back into water. And plants then can take that water, do the reverse transformation, and turn it into oxygen. So, so that's the, the uh, oxygen cycle in our world, you know, plants turn it into oxygen and then we turn it back into water. But the intermediate steps, you know, that uh, create these reactive oxygen species or these redox signaling molecules is very important inside of our body. Uh, about 90% of the oxygen that we breathe goes into our mitochondria. Our mitochondria produces the fuel we need along with uh, all of these other elements nutrients, <laughs> I wanted to point out, uh, water, and, and, um, and this is, comes from sugars. It creates the fuel that all of these machines need, um, this mitochondria, and also produces these reactive oxygen species, which were these intermediate uh, transformations of oxygen inside your cell. Uh, so you, um, we have learned that these intermediate um, species of oxygen, which are, by the way, um, eliminated by antioxidants like glutathione inside of our cells, uh, serve a very important signaling role. If you're there perfectly in balance, then it, it signals a healthy cell. If they become imbalanced and more oxygen uh, species, reactive oxygen species builds up, it's an oxidative stress, this pushes the buttons that are needed for the cell to repair itself. Sort of like the fire alarm, 
if you want to think of it. The smoke comes out, the fire alarm goes off, the cell says there's something wrong and starts to repair itself. This, these uh, um, reactive oxygen species also, which are the redox signaling uh, molecules, can stimulate the repair and replace process inside of our bodies. They stimulate, in fact, they cause repair and replacement of, of damaged cells everywhere in our body where there is an imbalance of, of, um, of the oxidation. Uh, the cells bring it back into balance. There's a delicate balance, says uh, James Watson. He also discovered the, um, the DNA between the two. Physical exercise prompts the body to make large numbers of oxidants, which are, are the redox signaling molecules, molecules called reactive oxygen species. It helps forge chemical bonds, which stabilize the proteins as they fold. Did you see the proteins unfolding? That's an oxidation process. It needs to be oxidized in order to move. If we didn't have oxidation inside our body, none of those molecules would be able to move or reattach, which is reduction. So all of the molecules coming apart and coming back together is an oxidation reduction uh, process. And it, it is uh, mediated by these redox signaling molecules or inside of our cells. Now, no one can say that oxidants are, are bad. <laughs> the oxidants are ex extremely necessary. The important part is that they are balanced inside of our body. Uh, there are a bunch of um, journals and everything else that, will, is able, that explain how these uh, things work inside of our body. Uh, the science is growing worldwide. Uh, very exciting and uh, interesting things. Uh, we learn inside this literature that antioxidants are not the heroes, just, uh, you know, they just play their part, just like me. Uh, oxidants uh, are not the little devils, you know, the evil pe people, they also just play their part. Um, I don't, I'm not reading any moral value into this, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what well, well, certainly different than what we've been taught you know it's you know oxidants are good or antioxidants are good and oxidants are bad so yes that that's correct what we need to learn uh, though uh, Bart is that absolutely every process in our body requires the um, cooperation of antioxidants and oxidants inside our cells to be able to carry on these processes of life they need to be perfectly balanced and, uh, and working together. If they are not, the cell actually will destroy itself. It will kill itself and re be replaced by division of other healthy cells around, um, uh, cells that have become too damaged, uh, put, pull off these, uh, put off these, I mean, send off redox signaling, um, signals and are de uh, kill themselves before they can spread the damage. So, um, you know, here's a really fun little thing that I like to do uh, for redox signaling uh, to show. Uh, a lot of us know that uh, when we cut off a tadpole tail that it can regenerate completely. Uh, here are some scientists, I mean, here's um, uh, that have cut off the tadpole tail, and they're me measuring the reactive oxygen species or redox signaling molecules uh, densities inside the regenerating table, tail, rather. The reds and the yellows represent redox signaling molecules. No notice how they, in the regeneration, in the process of regeneration, they are very prevalent. There are high concentrations of them. Once the tail is regenerated, all of a sudden these uh, reactive oxygen species go away. And so the scientists thought, well, well, is it that reactive oxygen species or redox signaling molecules are needed for regeneration, for cellular regeneration? They did the experiment again and they took out the uh, redox signaling molecules by, by using uh, very potent antioxidants. They think they used vitamin C or some, some other substances, uh, DMSOs, 
And uh, notice that the tail did not regenerate. So without these molecules, it made the regeneration of the tail absolutely impossible. So we re realized that these redox signaling molecules are required for tissue generation, and they participate fundamentally in the regeneration um, and repair and replacement of all, t all cells in all organisms on Earth, including plants, animals. So um, it, it's, uh, it, it's quite neat. In fact, it's even better to know that we have been able to take these um, perfectly balanced sets of redox signaling molecules, put them in a bottle, and uh, yeah, Bart has it. Uh, the bottle of ASEA contains these uh, perfectly balanced redox signaling molecules, have absolutely no harm, they're biocompatible, and yet they are so very active in helping our cells detect, repair, and replace uh, damage. Um, they also are active in, in helping us to uh, protect our cells through antioxidants. They make the antioxidants more potent that are naturally uh, produced in our cells. So uh, this is the reason why I'm here. This is just fascinating. It's fascinating that something so bioactive in, in a, nature can be so biocompatible and bioavailable to, to our bodies that it can, it can act as it, as it should. Um, I, is it all right, uh, Bart, if I just give some, some scientific results on this? Oh, yeah, please do. And, you know, I was just going to interject, if you don't mind. I was just going to say that this, to stabilize these molecules, I mean, the University of Utah, I mean, if I understand correctly, there were people pounding fists on the table saying it was impossible. It couldn't be done. <laughs> but that's, that's the miracle that we've got is what the, these molecules being stabilized outside the body in perfect balance. And, uh, you know, there's been literally millions and millions of dollars and, and many years of research that's been put into doing that. So uh, you're the... You're the one that's created the miracle and, and being able to figure out how to stabilize so, so we'd love to hear some of the pre uh some of the trials definitely yeah that's great yeah when when virtus uh, by the way first introduced this to me and i saw the scientific results i was the one pounding my hand on the table saying this is impossible you can't have those <laughs> molecules they don't exist in stable form um, and uh, learned later on that they were indeed stable and also they were indeed the redox signaling molecules. I was the one that identified them as redox signaling molecules in, in the body. So anyway, uh, what, what do these redox signaling molecules do? What do the reactive, well, um, active oxygen species do? Um, they kill bacteria, 100% of them. Over 30 of the resistant strains we've tried yet they have no ill effects on the beneficial flora and microbiome in our gut. We're going to be talking a little bit about that in a second. Uh, no inflammatory markers stimulated. Um, antioxidant efficiencies increased. Kill rates only in damaged cells. It accelerates, it kill, helps to keep the body to kill the damaged cells that can't be repaired. Increases sensitivity to hormones and reverses cell aging. These are some of the results that we've seen. It opens the detox channels, detoxification channels, activates stem cell adhesion for the regeneration of tissue, and, um, and it's key to help the cells regenerate. And some of the genetic studies that we have um, run show that the genes that are touched are actually those which help cells to regenerate and enzymes to become more effective. Um, in animals, there was an increase in endurance of mice. They could run 29% longer. It was kind of a joke in, in the, the lab that, you know, we have to give it to the cats in the lab. Uh, <laughs> um, increased available energy reserves also. Uh, the uh, metabolism shifts that we, we saw and antioxidant uh, increased antioxidant efficiencies, I'm sorry, increased in zero uh, adverse effects again, uh, were seen in any case. Over 23 years of uh, clinical studies, 
we have never seen even one case of an adverse effect. And uh, we have also seen around the world tens of thousands of reports now of benefits that from from this. Um, and I just I get more and more every day. Uh, I probably am the most fortunate man in the world. I get to see how this is spreading throughout the world. Um, I, on top of that, it actually makes you look more beautiful. <laughs> um, the, the Renew 28 uh, repairs your skin cells, repairs wrinkles, blotches, helps to increase the smoothness and texture, repairs the collagen uh, that makes the skin elastic. It helps uh, increase the hydration of the skin. Here are some of the very famous now um, pictures of this. It increases the blood flow to the skin. It decreases cellulite globules. It increases the rate of the cellular regeneration process uh, significantly, up to about 16%. In other words, it helps your skin regenerate and repair itself. It's exactly what it does inside the body, too, when, when you drink it. So we have the Renew 28 that is great for um, external or topical uh, applications it, it it absorbs into your skin and then we have the the liquid ASEA uh, redox which which is taken orally and it gets into your system so um, I, I'm gonna I, this is about where I switch uh, gears and go into nutrition so is there is there anything that uh, you wanted to add in uh, um, I was just going to quickly say for those new on the webinar today that the concentrated, it's a concentrated form of these redox signaling molecules in a gel as well, which is a topical application, which is for specific sort of areas of damage on the skin. So as, just to clarify again, as Dr. Samuelson was saying, we've got the ASEA liquid supplement with the molecules. We have Renew 28, which is a topical all um, whole body use gel and also a concentrated serum full of um, trillions of these stabilized molecules as well. So, so what's also um, important to kind of realize is that the ASEA, you know, that we've been talking about here, these molecules, there's no vitamins, there's no minerals in these. This is like the cellular communication. This is the, the, the thing that creates the communication between the cells. And that's what leads us into what, what's so important too, is what you had already talked about, the, the components of that, that's needed in that engine, which is the micronutrients and the minerals and so forth. So ASEA, if you think of it this way, I've, I've heard it said that it's like the head of the spring. Everything else is downstream from there. And it's, uh, it's also kind of important to realize that when we actually realize that we're not well, <laughs> our bodies have been, you know, moving down that path of being unwell for some time. Yeah, that is a, that's very true. I mean, it's sort of like a car that doesn't have good oil in it. If, uh, you know, your oil is not uh, working, uh, the car will work, the engine will turn over and, and function, but over time, you know, uh, it will wear down and it'll wear down faster. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny on that note, I just, in fact, I think it was just yesterday, I saw this little post that someone went in and they wanted, they went into a, an auto mechanic store. They wanted to find out if they had a longer dipstick for their oil because, because the oil wasn't reading on their dipstick properly. <laughs> There wasn't enough oil in there, and I think I think really that's what you're transitioning into in the in the sense of the integrity of the cell is dependent upon the nutrition that's present in the cell for the labor, which is the redox signaling molecules, to put that cellular nutrition to work. So that's the crossover which Dr. Samuelson's going to talk about now into the ASEA Via range of um, supplements that ASEA has recently launched, which connects, completes the other half of the story with the materials being needed in the cells. So thank you, Dr. Samuelson. That's right. This isn't the, the cure-all for everything. It's the, it's the messenger and you need to have all the right stuff in there along with it. So, so you don't need a longer dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, absolutely, um, and you know these uh, um, workers won't be able to do anything if they don't have the materials. You know, you, you can uh, bring everybody out to your work site and say, "Okay, we're all connected. We've got our radios. We have our cell phones. Uh, let's go." And if we don't have the materials, uh, they, these uh, are absolutely inefficient. 
So the, um, the nutrients absolutely are at, and, and needed. Uh, where do we find these nutrients? Well, we, we find them in foods. In fact, um, there are more than just one types of sugar. Of course, there are more types of starches. There's all sorts of fatty acids and lipids and, and such in all of the types of foods. And, all, and these uh, components are essential for the energy that, are, that are created, is created in our body to reconstruct our tissue, to construct our cell structures and such, uh, apart from the workers, you know. And, and so uh, providing these materials uh, for the workers inside our cell is, uh, is part of, of health. Um, I mentioned before that we don't have some of the nutrients or many of the nutrients inside of our foods. Um, and so that we need to supplement then these, uh, these nutrients uh, in order for the cells to work uh, properly and efficiently. Um, some of the ones that I want to mention today, and there's a little bit of a problem here with the slide, but um, is the uh, minerals are, are important for conduction of our nervous system. And without lithium, calcium, magnesium, selenium, copper, and all of these, our nervous system and also our brain chemistry can be unbalanced. Uh, this causes a, a, quite a bit of problems. Uh, not to worry, though, there are natural formulations that are in nature that are able to c accumulate these, um, these same minerals in, in natural foods in the soil, for example, bacteria accumulates these uh, minerals. Uh, there are other safe sources of minerals everywhere. Um, in the uh, ASEA via source, uh, we also, they also use, um, um, yeah, they use yeast and yeast living organisms. They, they pull out the nutrients from, from the different uh, components. Uh, which is which is great. This helps to bioaccumulate and uh, these things so that they we have enough of them. Um, there's also these micronutrients. There there's sugars, amino acids, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, we get a lot of those from the, our foods. Um, minerals that we mentioned before. Vitamins, carotenoids, and flavonoids. I wanted to mention also that the body as a machine, the cell as a machine in the system is not designed, not designed to use nutrients that are not in the, their natural form. Now I'm gonna say, say this again. Our digestive system is not designed to use nutrients unless they are in their natural form. The nutrients inside our foods come with cofactors, glycoproteins, and all sorts of other baggage that is needed in order to be able to carry the nutrients properly into our body and then uh, assure that they get to the, um, the places where they, they are needed. Uh, this is a cute little slide. If we want to build an elephant, we use herbs. We use leaves and straw. You can build an elephant, you can build a dinosaur, you can build anything with just veg vegetables. <laughs> and so I don't argue with an elephant if vegetables are not uh, healthy for you, uh, mm -hmm. are not able to create. <laughs> uh, the, the elements, the natural elements inside these vegetables are exactly what we need in order to build our body. Um, the food particles that are broken down inside of our digestive system uh, re represented by this whole glob of uh, different shapes here. There's different mi um, micronutrients and minerals and such inside of these food particles. Enzymes, there are billions of them in these particles. Enzymes then go get active and break down these uh, micronutrients into uh, the smaller forms. Perfect to be able to fil be filtered into the body. Stuff that isn't natural, the body tries to keep out. In fact, uh, the, the some of the drugs that we use um, 
these days have to be in such large concentrations because our liver and our intestinal filters try to keep the drugs out of our system. And so we have to overpower these filters in order to get enough drugs into the system. It's a little uh, scary. But um, if everything is working perfectly, then these uh, make it into the blood and then they're used to construct the systems and tissues inside of our, our body. Um, and that's how we digest the nutrients. Again, only uh, natural nutrients with their cofactors, which, are, which can be flavonoids um, and such, uh, will attach to these, uh, these uh, nutrients and make them bioavailable or available to our, our body. They make it into our blood and into our cells. Dr. Sanderson, um, sorry, a quick question. So would it be accurate to say that the quality of a nutritional line really is dependent upon the absorption or the bioavailability factor of it being able to be used by the body? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, I mean, is a nutrient any good if it's not able to make it in? No, not at all. And I think that's a distinctive factor when looking at a Sears uh, nutritional line because it's been designed specifically around and targeting 100% the bioavailability to enhance that in the body. Like for example, in source, and I won't go off on this tangent for too long because I know you're doing your presentation, but in source, the blend's been changed slightly so it can maximize the, um, the increase in the bioavailability of a couple of digestive, digestive enzymes from four times to six times. So they've really focused on that. That's just one example from one of the products. And there are so many nutritional lines that are loaded with synthetic vitamins that aren't from the natural sources. That the gastrointestinal tract can't use, we've just learned. So thanks, Dr. Sanderson. So, you know, absolutely. Um, and it'll try to throw those out. There's another very inventive thing that Source has done, or they have done to the Source vitamins, and that is uh, using a glycoprotein ferment, which means they partially digest some of these, you know, ferm they ferment, partially digest some of the glycoproteins, uh, which make it easier for the body to pull them in and, and break them down again. I um, think I think too the fructooligosaccharide in the biome does exactly that type of thing with the Jerusalem artichoke. So it, it ferments it, it breaks it down so it can go through the body and be used um, lower down in the gastrointestinal tract. Is that correct? That, that's uh, fairly accurate, yeah. Yeah, um, maybe you can mention, uh, yeah, Melissa, um, some of the um, elements that are in in a biome and life max. Yes, and so so, uh, that's a great idea. So the ASEA range, they've got three um, products right now. There's ASEA Via Source, which is the whole food based micronutrient supplement. We've been learning about micronutrients from Dr. Samuelson this morning and their importance in the machine of the cell. And then there is Biome, which is a full spectrum probiotic it also contains um, 16 probiotic strains and a, just one prebiotic for the Australian market, three in the US market. And we have marshmallow root in Australia in place of slippery elm um, in the United States. And then there's Life Max, which is a, a brilliant lifestyle, um, a cellular lifestyle supplement to support our active lives and the stress on the cellular level. And it's precisely formulated um, with 16 distinctive plants as well. And it's all focused really, as I said, all three of these products are focused specifically to working with redox signaling molecules to make the labor easier on the body. And also it's targeting specific areas that I think Dr. Samuelson, you'll cover on um, in some of these slides with some of those aspects. So it really is targeting the, the, the integrity of the cellular health to maximize the bio, bioavailability for the nutrition to be in the cell for redox. Is that, please feel free to add anything to that. That's just a general summary, Dr. Samuelson. Oh no, the, yeah, well, I, I also want to mention that um, natural um, bioavailable minerals from red algae are also being used um, inside uh, the source product, uh, which are very important uh, also for bioavailability to, um, uh, in that sense. So, you know, and, and also what there's uh, what holy basil, lemon, and guava in the LifeMax 
Um, what, what, what do you think, by the way, what do you think of these, uh, these basil, lemon, and, and guava have inside them? I would stab a guess and say antioxidants, but I just a guess. Yes. Yeah, um, antioxidants. They also have well, the, fuel, the fuels, like the gas. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, um, the natural fruits that we have, like um, the pomegranates. And, and such, um, they, they have vitamin B complexes actually uh, inside the, those things, which which are great. But they also have, uh, I mean, a full complement of, of the vitamin B. Superfoods, by the way, are foods that have full complements of all of these micronutrients in them that we've mentioned. So and, you know, oh, I was going to say, interestingly, on the superfood, they grow they're growing mushrooms on blue or purple corn which have anthocyanins which are blue from blue plants which really um, magnifies the antioxidant um, availability of and the superfood content really that is a superfood the purple corn is that correct oh yeah well as, as i think you know almost more about that than i do um that's that's uh, that is, is correct um uh, but these, these things also um, have a lot of energy in them. They have, they have uh, fructose, they have the polysaccharides, and they have a, a lot of the other ones. Um, you, know, you know, we have fructose and lactose and gal, uh, gal, galtose, uh, sorry, many different types of polysaccharides which are needed inside our body too. Um, and they're energy, they're needed for energy. And a lot of the foods that we have have refined sugars that are just that are just a sucrose type, and you know from beets and cane, and they don't have all of these these good uh, sugars that come from uh, fruits and berries. So uh, you know, uh, you could mention that. Well, the the trace minerals you mentioned earlier too. So from a from your scientific perspective, I mean our soils in Australia. I studied a soil chemistry degree. 30 years ago, and this is probably the only time I've used it. <laughs> but I was going to say, I know back then our soils in Australia were two thirds depleted, completely leached of the minerals that we need, and particularly the trace minerals. So we cannot get that in Australia. We have to supplement trace minerals because here we are 30 years down the track, and our soils haven't improved necessarily looking across the um, continent that we have. So in terms of the cellular level, trace minerals are really just needed in minute amounts, but are you able to expand on their, their role at, in the cellular level at all, why we need them? Um, well, I mentioned how, where they're needed in the nervous system. Uh, but you know, these trace minerals are the components that make up our antioxidants. They're the center of these redox reactions. So, um, uh, they're the semaphores also for redox signaling interactions. So if we don't have the semaphores, um, the signaling molecules are not able to uh, pass the message or regulate themselves. So th these trace minerals, minerals, excuse me, like selenium, magnesium, absolutely important um, for redox signaling to take place in our, in our body. Thanks for clarifying that, because you mentioned the, the algae before, and I know that they've really um, used, used land trace minerals as well that are specific in these ASEA, well, in the product. One, one thing that's impressed me is that they've gone to painstaking detail to, to make sure that the products, that, you know, the, the, what's in this is the best of the best. And the other thing is, is that, uh, like a lot of companies, they'll just dust it with different, you know, the, the alphabet of the, of the vitamins, just enough so that they can put it on the label Whereas in these products, there's enough of, of everything that's in there that it would have a substantial effect to the body and, and actually give you the benefit, not just uh, be able to stick it on the label as saying it's in there. No. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to give you a bunch of pictures to end this off, um, and then we can we, we can just um, do uh, what you feel is is uh, good for the end part. Um, our cardiovascular system made out of cells, endocrine system as a messaging system. Every aspect of hormonal transmission involves redox signaling and, and also nutrients. Yeah. Did you know that most of our hormones are made out of polysaccharides, sugars? Did you know that trees are made out of sugars? 
<laughs> you yeah, know, no wood, wood actually wood fibers are, are sugar molecules in in, uh, in, in different formations. Um, yeah, our skin, of course, made out of cells, uh, and then we mentioned that before. Lungs, redox signaling, incredibly important for lungs, uh, for our digestive system, all of the cells that help to absorb the nutrients in our system. We've got to heal our gut first in order to be able to absorb nutrients. Uh, current nervous system research, uh, by the way, um, shows that redox balance is absolutely critical. Let me add on to that trace minerals. We, we, have, we have to have those. And so I believe that these technologies, along with redox signaling technology, which of course is my field of expertise, is going to fuel the greatest advances of science in this century. So, there we go. That was that was a presentation. Now we can we can chat about it a bit if you wish. Oh, that's fantastic! Thank you. That was really clear. It it was actually fascinating, and I've learnt so much already from what you've been speaking about. And the image I have in my mind is definitely the tadpoles. They, that was a great example. So thanks for sharing that with us. And I noticed when I was doing a, a comparison, when I was looking at uh, a sea of via source and biome and life max, there are certain themes that are really repeated across the range. And you may be able to shed some light on the fact that what's repeated repetitively mentioned as benefits for each of these products really is the effects on, on inflammation, curbing inflammation. And by the way, any of these, none of these statements I'm about to make are FDA approved. I'm just having a ch casual chat about it. So in terms of the um, improved inflammation before it becomes chronic, um, there's also a common theme of mental well-being, mental health. Um, also, there's the, the common theme of um, cardiovascular health, which obviously we know is extremely important, and assimilation, as well as the benefits for stress. So that's just generally speaking, but do you have any comments on, on those areas of health and why these products are targeted for, the, for those benefits? Yeah, I wanted to refocus a little bit on redox signaling in those uh, areas. Um, redox signaling molecules are probably some of the best anti-inflammatories that have ever existed because they actually work on the on the cellular level. Uh, antioxidants that we have get in our foods also help for in, inflammatory effects. But again, the redox signaling molecules without the trace minerals that I mentioned before are not very effective for um, creating antioxidant um, uh, effects. Well, you know, just adding on a little, you know, interesting piece here. Um, you know, the balance is the thing that is most important inside of ourselves. If the redox signaling system is in balance, then it, it, when there's inflammation, it'll reduce the inflammation. Uh, when, when, there's, uh, then when there are other deficiencies, it'll raise the deficiencies. That's what keeps uh, everything in life uh, working. That when, when something gets out of kilter, the body knows how to correct itself. With, without the redox signaling, it can't correct itself. You get into chronic conditions. Without proper nutrition, also, you don't have the materials and supplies, you can't build a house, you can't uh, repair your structures. Uh, and those type of things also will cause chronic problems over time. Um, and and you, you can imagine. So, you know, uh, as part of this also is, is, is getting the balance right, getting the balance of these, of these things right. We need to eat less sugars. We need to eat more nutrients. Um, you get on your plate, for example, if you look on your plate and all you see is white and brown, which are meats and, and sugars or carbs, um, it's not good <laughs> because it's missing all of the micronutrients that we were talking about, all of the supplies. So you might be giving the cells a lot of energy. You might be giving them, um, you know, the proteins they need to build themselves, but you're not giving them any of the supplies. So have you ever tried to build a house without, you know, the, proper supplies, you, you know, you can't do it. 
and it's a, it's the same way same way with the cells. So you you need a proper amount. If you get too much sugars, it's really really bad. The body has to put them away as fats. If if you get uh, too too little uh, of the proteins or too or incorrect balance of amino acids, it can throw the whole thing out of kilter. You know, so that the you know that little part is uh, for me maybe one of the most important things. You got to have the correct balance of these things in your body. Yeah. Well, I didn't know until today that 90% of the oxygen we breathe in is needed in the mitochondria and, and really how important exercise is too in terms of increasing our capacity for dealing with oxygen, or needing, needing oxygen for the body. So that was really interesting. Um, I hadn't thought of it that way. So in terms of, you know, deep breathing or in terms of just how we live our lives, um, it's going to have an impact in the mitochondria and then the mitochondria's ability to produce these molecules, which is really why we even more so need to supplement with these molecules. Mm. Can I mention one other fact thing, uh, Melissa, at the very end here? I think that we kind of left off the microbiome part. We haven't, uh, we haven't really given it all of that it deserves. Good point. Um, you know, uh, our body is made out of uh, cells. Each cell has about 20,000 genes, and those 20,000 genes produce 20,000 proteins or little micro machines inside there. And some of those are broken down and others, so we, we may be able to, to cr create um, maybe 100,000 different types of little micro machines from our own genes. But the bacteria inside of our body have more than 2 million genes. And if you have a good variety of bacteria in your gut, they're producing the types of machines and, and micronutrients that we cannot produce for ourselves. They're also helping digest our, our foods. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of interesting. We need 260,000. We use 260,000 of these little micro machines inside of our body. And we, and we before, you know, or, or something around the, those numbers, the numbers vary depending on, you know, who says them. But uh, we, we, an awful lot more than, than can be accounted for just by, um, just by our own human cells. So basically, you know, most of the nutrients and things that we absolutely uh, can absorb come from the bacteria inside our gut. If the bacteria is, out, is not there, and if we've taken antibiotics or something like that, then, then uh, we, we can have problems, um, serious problems. That we can't digest nutrients. Um, so so I, should, I should mention that, too. I hope that, you know, that's, that's also very, very clear. We're mostly bacteria. <laughs> as far as our makeup it goes, you know, we, a, lo a lot of it is deal, deals due to the bacteria. And the biome supports the, the beneficial bacteria, so it really supports the gastrointestinal tract. I know that previous, for people who may not know a lot about probiotics, um, previously the school of thought was you take a couple of strains, you, you put billions of those, just two strains, for example, into a probiotic, and then they're used as a belly bomb. So they're hope, hoping that they're going to go and do the job. But as you've described, there's so many different bacteria that whose job is not essentially the same. They, they really have specific jobs depending upon where they are in the gastrointestinal tract as well. So SC has designed the biome range to be full spectrum, to really take care of, the, of each of the bacteria so that they can more effectively do their job. Would that be an accurate way of describing it? Well, that is very, very good, yes. You can think of, a, of the bacteria in your gut as uh, living in a, on a field. And you have to be able to fertilize the field in order to be, to be able to grow the bacteria that is needed. So, uh, you know, the biome, I think, has um, almost the best effect that the biome has is that it, it, it regenerates or it creates or it contains uh, the nutrients that are needed to, uh, to grow the helpful bacteria. The, the 16 or in, in the United States of the uh, probiotics that you have and then the three prebiotics um, that, that are used, et cetera, are nothing compared to the tens of thousands of bacteria varieties that are in the gut. You know, we need, we need a lot of them. But 
the nutrients that they grow on that they need are very important. So these prebiotics are extremely important to be able to nourish the bacteria that we have in our gut. And so, uh, you know, that, that's really cool. Um, if I want to mention that if you really want to get a good probiotic, go out into nature, garden, get your hands in the soil, smell that, that uh, beautiful loamy uh, smell. Those are, the, those are exactly the type of uh, probiotics that are in nature that, that you need. And then along with the prebiotics, um, will, will help the, uh, the system to uh, grow what it needs inside. Well, I know, thank you for sharing that with us because we've been on source for a little longer, but, but Biome and LifeMax last um, six weeks. I usually, to be honest with you, don't notice a heck of a lot from nutritional supplements. I just never have, um, other than sometimes I open the bottle and they make me feel sick. But um, I've got to say in terms of the results that we've been getting with with the gastrointestinal tract working the way it's supposed to, with energy, vitality, and mental clarity, we're absolutely noticing it. And that's just not us. I'm sure you're hearing reports from people even more than we are in terms of you know, what's happening with this range, with the stories of people's, people's health. One thing I just wanted to comment on too, which is important to do LifeMax justice. One of the attributes or benefits of LifeMax is it helps to promote healthy cell division in the body. And with what you've spoken about, before with the um, apoptosis with the with the cell needing to kill itself etc how important is healthy cell division in the body to have something to target that absolutely and all cellular regeneration depends on having the materials and supplies and and signaling necessary to divide our cells and make new cells yeah i mean uh, well our guts are regenerated uh, about every seven all of the tubes in our intestines are regenerated about every seven days. So you can imagine just the, the volume of uh, cellular regeneration that we are undergoing every day. There's a, a very dear friend of ours that uh, she's 80 years old and she's, she said she's, she's really quite, quite healthy and vibrant and she says, I'm healthy by choice, not by chance. I just love that quote. And I, I've, always, I've always appreciated your whole um, holistic approach to uh, to health, and, and it's not just about you know one product. It's not just about drinking a seed that's going to be the fix all, for example. But it's it's really getting out to nature. It's, uh, it's the thoughts we think. It's hiking in the woods. It's like you said, putting your hands in the soil, eating the right things. Um, you know, when you go in the grocery store, you can pretty much match up what's in people's shopping cart with uh, with kind of how they look. <laughs> <laughs> and what their health is and if they're wearing an oxygen carrying an oxygen mask with them as they go through the, the grocery store you can probably assume what's in their in their cart as well so um i just overall i know you've got a lot of experience in this area uh, and uh, probably goes without saying but from your experience um how would you you know rank the nutrition line that the sea has put together here i i think it's a plus it's it's a very good nutrition line you know um you certainly have a lot of great nutritional products out there. They've been out there for a long period of time. Uh, very few of them actually put together all of the elements that are needed in, in one place. And so, you know, the CIA did a, a really good job, I feel, uh, finding the nutritional uh, lines and the technologies that are necessary um, in order to support, uh, in, in order to support us. You know, I'm not going to talk against any other company, et cetera. I know I, some of them do have excellent products, uh, but this this is a, uh, an altogether, you know, one source type of a product. Oh, I think you've really nailed it there. Acid has made our life really easy with the redox molecules, with the nutrition line. I was I write down as you were talking. You know, we started off with saying you're our hero and hopefully people now can see through this webinar what you've done for society and what you've done for each of us. And I wrote down that really the best way for us to thank you is to take personal responsibility for our health and use the right labour and use the right nutrition as well as the other things that you've mentioned to improve our lives, to be healthier and have better 
happy, smiling cells, which I know you've said you've looked down the microphone, the microscope before and the cells are smiling at you. So I just figure that that's the best way that we can really thank you by taking personal responsibility for our health. And of course, some people will take responsibility for this information and some won't. And that's okay. It's not going to go away. These molecules are a piece of the future that got here early, thanks to you. And same with this nutrition line. So we feel truly blessed with the knowledge that you've imparted amongst all of us globally. I know you get, I dare say, hundreds and hundreds or plus thank you cards and emails and just the most amazing feedback based on what you've done for society, for humanity and for each of us. So we're incredibly grateful for you and Iris and all that you do um, for us. Thank you for your information today. And for people who want more specific information on a via nutrition line, there's product information sheets in the virtual office. Um, the Australian market's still getting that uploaded, but get together with the person who invited you to get more specific information on that. And I'm not sure if you want to wrap up or if you've got anything more you would like to say. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to say thank you as well. This has actually been so so much great information. Um, if, if you like what you've heard and seen, you know, this is recorded, but you can always go to Dr. Samuelson's Facebook page as well and share that as well because it's been recorded uh, in that place. I know that there was a comment, is this recorded? Um, look, we just are extremely grateful. Thank you so much for your time and for everything that you've done. You're, you know, together we can all change the world and let's do it. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. Thank you, Dr. Samuelson. Because we've gone over a little little bit of time, feel free to put your chat questions um, that are compliant on Dr. Samuelson's Facebook page, which is Gary Samuelson Facebook. Thank you again to Maria Hopwood for this opportunity um, for us to be chatting with Dr. Samuelson today and Stevie Aquilina for running the Facebook side of things. And um, thank you all from around the world for joining us today. So we'll keep you posted on the next uh, webinar with Dr. Samuelson and be sure to get his book, The Science of Healing Revealed as well. It explains it in a very layman's terms for each of us to understand what he's been talking about today. So, And, and order your uh, a C of EF. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yes, good stuff. Thanks so much, Dr. Samuelson. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Okay. Um, bye. Cheers. Good night. Good night.